Life of Satoru Gojo, Jujutsu Kaisen Satoru Gojo is one of the main protagonists of the Jujutsu Kaisen series. He is a special grade Jujutsu sorcerer and is widely recognized as the strongest in the world. Gojo is the pride of the Gojo family, the first person to inherit both the Limitless and the Six Eyes in 400 years. He works as a teacher at the Tokyo Jujutsu High and uses his influence to protect and train strong young allies. Welcome to the Amagi! In today's video, we're going over the life of Satoru Gojo. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day. So be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Yamagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel. So if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all our social media. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Background Satoru Gojo was born on December 7, 1989. After he was born, the balance of power shifted, and Gojo had a bounty put on his head and was targeted by bounty hunters. During his second year as a student, Gojo, along with his classmates Shuguru Geto and Shoko Lieri, went to check up on Meimei and Utahime after not hearing from them for two days. After the three managed to rescue Meimei and Utahime along with dealing with the curse, Geto, along with Gojo and Shoko, attend a meeting where Masamichi Yaga punishes Gojo for not putting up a curtain. Later, Geto is in the classroom with Gojo and Shoko, where they discuss the importance of a curtain. Geto and Gojo then get into an argument about the strong protecting the weak, which almost ends with them fighting. Suddenly, Masamichi enters the room and gives Geto and Gojo a mission from Master Tengen. Masamichi explains to the two about the importance of the mission and that they will look out for two groups who want to stop them. After being informed about the mission, Gojo and Geto head out. As they arrive at the location to pick up the vessel for the mission, an explosion happens and the vessel falls to the ground. Before the vessel hits the ground, Gojo helps Geto save the vessel. Gojo is then confronted by a member of Q, Bear. Gojo easily defeats Bear and meets up with Geto and the vessel, Riko Amanai. Gojo, along with Geto, introduce themselves to Riko. The three then start to talk, and Riko explains how she's not upset about fusing with Tengen. After talking, Gojo and Geto bring Riko to her junior high, since she forced them to so that she can visit her friend. Once they arrive at the school, Gojo calls Masamichi, who explains how they have to oblige Riko before she fusses with Tengen. After talking with Masamichi, they decide to check the surveillance spirits, and Geto tells him that the two have been exercised. Gojo and Mizato head out to protect Riko, while Geto deals with the intruders. Gojo manages to find Riko and drags her off to take her to Jujutsu High. On the way, Gojo is contacted by Geto, who informs him about the situation. Suddenly, the two encounter multiple opponents, and Gojo figures out that the opponent is using the clone technique to increase his numbers. Gojo manages to defeat their opponent, but Riko informs him that Misato has been captured by the enemy. Gojo and Rika meet up with Geto and they discuss what to do next. They decide to save Misato and head to Okinawa for the meeting spot with the kidnappers. They manage to save Misato and decide to have some fun before heading back. When it's time to head back to the college, Riko manages to convince them to stay for one more day. Geto asks Gojo if he is alright since Gojo has been using his technique for a while. But Gojo says that he's fine and they continue to have fun. The next day, the four head back to the college but are attacked when they arrive. Gojo tells the others to head inside while he takes care of the enemy. Gojo fights the enemy, but notices he can't read his opponent's moves because the enemy has no cursed energy. When he loses trace of the enemy, Gojo decides to sweep the field with one of his techniques. After sweeping the field, Gojo figures that his opponent won't be able to sneak up on him, but the enemy manages to block Gojo's vision with multiple cursed spirits. Gojo wonders what to do, but the enemy attacks and manages to wound Gojo. Gojo manages to recover and heads off to the Star Religious Group's base to retrieve Riko's body. Once there, he confronts the enemy and explains how he managed to survive. Gojo then takes on the enemy and after a couple of exchanges, manages to kill him with his purple technique. Gojo then heads inside the Star Religious Group's base and manages to retrieve Riko's body. When Geto shows up, Gojo suggests that they take care of everyone there, but Geto tells him that there's no reason to do so since their group will be disbanded soon enough. A year later, Geto and Shoko are helping Gojo with his techniques. Gojo explains that he's able to continuously use his technique without causing harm to himself. 
Days later, Gojo is informed that Geto is on the run after having massacred an entire village along with killing his own parents. Gojo is contacted by Shoko, who tells him that Geto is in Shinjuku. Gojo heads over to Shinjuku and manages to confront Geto. The two then talk about how Geto plans to kill every non-shaman in the world. When Geto starts to walk away, Gojo thinks about how he can't bring himself to kill Geto. Gojo meets with Masamichi and the two talk about how strong he is after that. Sometime later, Gojo meets with the young Megumi Fushigiro and the two talk about Megumi's father and the Zenin family. When Megumi says that he doesn't care about his dad anymore since he hasn't been around for a while, Gojo tells Megumi to just ask him if he wants to know anything about his dad. Gojo then asks if he wants to go to the Zenin family, to which Megumi says that his answer will depend if his sister will be happy if they go. Gojo tells Megumi that his sister would not be happy, and that he will take care of things, and that Megumi should just focus on getting strong from now on. Cursed Child Arc Gojo talks with the higher-ups about Yuta Okotsu, and manages to convince them to push off his execution and let Yuta join the college. When Yuta decides to stay in isolation, Gojo heads over and convinces him to attend the college. Gojo then brings Yuta to the college and introduces him to his new classmates, Maki Zinen, Panda, and Toge Inumaki. As the three prepare to attack Yuta, Gojo tries to warn them, but Rika shows up to defend Yuta. Gojo tells the class of Yuta's situation and introduces the class to Yuta. Gojo then pairs the students up for their lesson. Gojo brings Maki and Yuta to an elementary school and explains that they will be exercising curses and save two children that have disappeared. Gojo then puts up a screen and leaves the two of them to handle the rest. When Yuta unleashes Rika to handle the spirit, Gojo comments on the intensity of the spirit. After Yuta manages to handle the situation, Gojo brings them to a hospital and informs Yuta that the two boys and Maki will be alright. Gojo then talks with Yuta and how he plans to release Rika from the curse that he had most likely placed on her. Gojo then takes Yuta to another location and gives him a katana. Gojo explains to Yuta that he will need to pour the powers of the curse through the katana in order to break the curse and that Yuta will need to train with the katana first. Sometime later, Gojo meets with the higher-ups and informs them about the kind of Rika's curse. After the meeting, Gojo heads towards his students while complaining about the higher-ups. Gojo watches as Yuta and Maki train, until he assigns Yuta and Toge a mission. When Yuta wonders about Toge, Gojo explains who Toge is and what he's capable of. Gojo also tells Yuta that he will be observing Toge only and that he should not let Rika out. After the mission is complete, Gojo is informed about what happened during the mission. Later, Gojo meets with Masamichi about Geto and rushes to the first years after Geto arrives at the college. When Gojo tells Geto to leave the first years alone, Geto responds by saying he will start an all-out war on a certain day. Once Geto leaves, Gojo attends a meeting where they discuss their course of action. On December 24th, Gojo is at Shinjuku and wonders why Geto is not at the front line. Suddenly, Kiyotaka tells Gojo about what he had found out about Yuta, and Gojo figures out that Geto is at the college. Gojo then uses his power to send Toge and Panda back to the college. When the war starts, Gojo takes on Miguel and manages to easily overpower him. Once all of Geto's comrades leave, Gojo heads over to the college and confronts Geto. After having a chat with Geto, Gojo deals with him. Gojo then meets with his student and informs Yuta that he is a distant relative of his. When Rika's curse is undone, Gojo says that it was Yuta who had cursed her and congratulates him on undoing her curse. Later, Gojo is with Yuta and informs him about Geto. He then gives him back his student ID that Geto has. Fearsome Womb Arc Gojo arrives at Sugisawa 3rd High School to check up on the situation and finds out that Yuji has eaten one of Sukuna's fingers. Gojo decides to check Yuji's strength by seeing if Yuji can take his body back after letting Sukuna have control for 10 seconds. Gojo then takes on Sukuna and after 10 seconds, Yuji takes back his body. Afterward, Gojo knocks Yuji out to see if Sukuna takes over after Yuji wakes up. Gojo then asks what Megumi thinks they should do to which Megumi replies that they should execute Yuji, but doesn't want him to die. Megumi also asks for Gojo's help, and his teacher agrees to do something about it. Later, when Yuji wakes up, Gojo greets him and introduces himself to him. Gojo also informs Yuji that his execution has been sent, and explains the reason that they are going to suspend their execution. 
Gojo also explains who Sukuna is and how in order to finally exercise Sukuna, that is why Yuji has to eat all of Sukuna's fingers before being executed. After letting Yuji go to meet with his friends, Gojo meets with him and asks for his decision. Yuji asks about the casualties that come from curses, which Gojo explains to him. Yuji then asks for Sukuna's finger, and Gojo gives the finger to him. Yuji manages to remain in control after eating the finger, and Gojo figures that Yuji is able to keep Sukuna in check. He then tells Yuji to get his stuff together since he will be joining the college and that there is only three first years. After arriving at the college, Gojo is escorting Yuji to his interview with Principal Masamichi and also warns him that he might fail the interview if he messes up. Suddenly, Sukuna talks through a mouth he made on Yuji and voices his opinions about the school. Sukuna also says that he will kill Gojo first since he owes him a debt and Gojo considers it an honor. Gojo then brings Yuji to Masamichi, who then Gojo watches as Yuji has his interview. When Masamichi accepts Yuji to the college, Gojo brings Yuji to his room. While Yuji is unpacking, Gojo explains that Yuji is now a radar that can find Sukuna's fingers since he has become Sukuna's vessel. When Megumi comes out of his room, which is next to Yuji's, Gojo tells them that tomorrow they will go pick up the third first year student. The next day, Gojo takes Megumi and Yuji to Harajuku in order to pick up the last first year student, Nobara. After they pick up Nobara, Gojo brings the three to Ropongi for a mission that disappoints Nobara and Yuji. As they reach the mission site, Gojo informs them that only Nobara and Yuji will go inside since he wants to test them. Gojo also hands Yuji a cursed tool since he can't use Jujutsu yet, but also tells them to not let Sukuna out. Gojo then waits outside with Megumi as Nobara and Yuji head inside. While waiting, Gojo explains his reasoning for wanting to test them. When one of the spirits tries to escape, Gojo stops Megumi from exercising it so that Nobara can exercise it. After the mission is complete, Gojo decides to take them out to eat. Two weeks later, Gojo goes on a business trip, and due to this, he is unable to take the first years on a mission. Cursed training arc. After the mission at the detention center that resulted in Yuji's death, Gojo meets at the morgue with Kiyotaka. Gojo talks about how Yuji's death during the mission was planned by the higher-ups and that he should just kill them all. When Shoko shows up to examine the body, Gojo tells her to make use of him. As Shoko prepares for her examination, Gojo explains to Kiyotaka why he had become a teacher. Just as Shoko is about to start her examination, Gojo watches as Yuji suddenly returns to life. Gojo greets Yuji about him returning to life. Gojo then leaves with Shoko and discusses how he wants Yuji to stay as deceased on the paper so that he can help get Yuji stronger. Afterward, Gojo brings Yuji to a room to train him in the art of jujutsu, which Yuji is excited about. Gojo then explains how cursed power and techniques work, and even demonstrates it. Gojo also explains how emotions play a big part in controlling cursed power, and that Yuji will train by watching movies. Gojo hands Yuji a cursed corpse that attacks a person that is not releasing a constant flow of cursed power, and says that Yuji will be watching movies with it. When Yuji starts to watch the movies, Gojo heads out to meet with Principal Masamichi. While being driven to the meeting by Kiyotaka, Gojo has Kiyotaka stop the car. Gojo gets out and tells Kiyotaka to head on without him. After Kiyotaka leaves, Gojo is attacked by Jogo, but Gojo is unharmed. Gojo thinks about how Jogo is an unregistered special grade spirit, and that Jogo might be stronger than the current Sukuna. Jogo then continues his assault, and Gojo remains unharmed by any of his attempts. As Jogo wonders why Gojo is unharmed, Gojo explains how his ability works, and that even though Jogo can't touch him, he can easily touch Jogo. Gojo then attacks Jogo by kicking him, which sends Jogo flying. As Jogo tries to counterattack, Gojo easily dodges and attacks Jogo. Gojo then heads back to retrieve Yuji so that he can observe the fight. As Gojo arrives back on the fight, Jogo comments about how Yuji will become a hindrance to Gojo. Gojo replies that it won't matter since Jogo is weak, which makes Jogo angry. Gojo then tells Yuji not to leave his side as Jogo traps the two in his territorial expansion. As Yuji is confused, Gojo explains what territorial expansion is and how it works. Gojo then uses his own territorial expansion to trap Jogo and explains to Jogo and Yuji how his technique works. Gojo destroys Jogo's body and starts to interrogate him. Suddenly, Gojo and Yuji are distracted 
which Hanami uses as a chance to rescue Jogo. Gojo and Yuji try to stop them, but the two have already escaped. Gojo then explains to Yuji that he is going to train him to get stronger. Days later, Gojo meets with Yashinobu and talks about how the wave of power that the older generations have to keep sealed will come crashing down on them. As Yoshinobu becomes angry at Gojo, Gojo says that he's done talking and leaves, but not before telling Yoshinobu that Masamichi will arrive two hours later. Versus Mahito arc. A month later, Gojo has Nanami accompany Yuji on a mission since he can't. After the mission is finished, Gojo meets up with Nanami and Yuji. Gojo seems relieved that Nanami didn't tell Yuji about them retrieving one of the Sukuna's cursed fingers from Jupei Yoshino's home. Kyoto Goodwill Event Arc On the day of the Kyoto Goodwill Event, Gojo is with Nanami as they discuss what had happened during the mission that Yuji was on. When Yuji arrives, excited about meeting the others, Gojo tells Yuji that they have to make it a surprise and explains his reasoning. Yuji agrees with Gojo and wonders what he has to do. Later, Gojo meets up with the Tokyo and Kyoto students, along with the faculty, and reveals that Yuji is still alive. As Yoshinobu seems shocked, Gojo mocks him about this. Gojo then helps to explain how the event will be held to the students. Afterward, Gojo meets with Utahime, and Gojo reveals that there might be a spy, and that he wants Utahime to investigate the Kyoto College. When Utahime asks what if she's the mole, Gojo simply replies that she's too weak to be the mole, and throws her a cup of tea at him. Before the event starts, Gojo meets up with the other faculty to watch the event. As the event starts, Gojo washes it through monitors with the other faculties. During the event, Meimei notices how strong Maki is, and wonders why she has not been promoted. Gojo explains how her family is getting in the way, and also points out how the video around Yuji is inconsistent. Gojo thinks that they have something up their sleeve, but Yuji is not the same that he once was. As another cursed spirit is exercised, Gojo wonders if the students have forgotten about the main objective. When the intruders invade the site, Gojo heads over to the site along with Utahime and Yoshinobu. As they head over, Yoshinobu tells Gojo to get into the area before the screen is completed, but Gojo notices that the effect of the screen is already done. As the three reach the site, they find out that Gojo is the only one that can't enter the screen. Gojo tells the two to head in so that they can help the others. After some time passes, Gojo finally manages to break into the barrier. He decides to handle Juzo first and easily manages to restrain him. Gojo then uses a hollow purple technique on Hanami, but they can't tell for sure if he's killed. After the intruders have been dealt with, Gojo attends a meeting with the other faculty members where they discuss everything that had happened during the invasion and how they have gotten nothing from Juzo. As Masamichi says that the event is over, Gojo notes that this is not for them to decide. Gojo then meets with the students, and they settle on continuing the event. When it is decided that they will play a game of baseball, Gojo plays the umpire for the game. Death Painting Arc Days later, Gojo calls Utahime to talk about what his students have done, and wonders if she had found something out about the mole in the mist. After hanging up on Utahime, Gojo thinks about how he is counting on Meimei, to whom he transfers 10 million yen, around $90,000, via the bank account. Shibuya Incident Arc Some time later, Gojo is asleep when Yuji, Megumi, and Nobara arrive at his location. Gojo wakes up and sends the three to where Utahima is at. On October 31st, Gojo enters the curtain that was erected over Shibuya. As Gojo makes his way through the crowd of people, he figures out the enemy's intentions and decides to move towards the basement. As Gojo reaches the underground subway, he is confronted by Jogo, Hanami, and Choso. Gojo then prepares to fight against the three. As Hanami starts to block all the exits, Gojo tells them that that is not necessary since he is not planning to run away. The cursed spirit then has the trapped people surround them and starts to attack Gojo. When Jogo and Hanami attack using the domain amplification technique on Gojo, Gojo manages to dodge it. Gojo thinks about how domain amplification works, and how he is now vulnerable to their attacks. When Jogo comments about how Gojo was not going to run away, Gojo replies that he's surprised that the cursed spirits think that they thought they could defeat him with tiny brains. Gojo takes his blindfold around his eyes off, and says that he will first take down Hanami, since Hanami hasn't learned his lesson after facing him twice before. As Gojo gets closer to Jogo and Hanami, Jogo and Hanami attack Gojo. 
Gojo manages to dodge their attacks and even manages to rip Jogo's arm off. As Jogo goes to distance himself from the fight, Gojo chases after him. Hanami figures that Gojo is not using his curse techniques and decides to try an attack with his technique, but Jogo tells him not to do it. Gojo quickly grabs a hold of Hanami and breaks the branches off of Hanami's head. Suddenly, Choso attacks Gojo, but Gojo easily blocks the attack. Gojo figures out that Choso is one of the cursed womb death painting and how he is not attacking like Hanami and Jogo. Suddenly, Hanami and Jogo attack Gojo, but Gojo tells them that this attack won't work since Hanami is currently weakened. Gojo then uses his curse technique to crush Hanami against the wall. After killing Hanami, Gojo tells Jogo that he is next. Jogo and Choso continue to attack Gojo, but all their attacks don't work. Gojo thinks about how the two are attacking from a distance, and that is all they can do. Gojo notices that the people are starting to avoid him, and thinks about how he will be able to get to Jogo once enough people scatter. Gojo thinks about how he wants to fight the two, and that he won't be able to save them all. Gojo then comments about how he will exercise the cursed spirits. When a train full of mutated humans arrives and starts to attack the people, Gojo wonders what they're thinking. As Mahito attacks Gojo, Gojo easily dodges and counters, but Mahito dodges. When more humans are sent to their location, Gojo thinks about how the entrance to their location is open, and that there are more shamans or curses throwing the humans to their location. Gojo is then distracted when Mahito and Choso attack, but all it does is kill the humans around him. When Jogo suddenly attacks, Gojo grabs a hold of Jogo's arm, but Jogo cuts it off to get away. Gojo then activates his domain expansion for less than a second, which stuns cursed spirits and humans. After undoing his domain expansion, Gojo begins to kill all the mutated humans. After taking care of all the mutated humans, Gojo notices a small box on the floor. The box opens, appearing with what looks like a stretched piece of skin with an eye the size of a face staring back at Gojo. Gojo stares at the eye before deciding to leave, but freezes when he hears a familiar voice. Walking up from behind him was his once deceased best friend, Geto Suguru. Gojo's confusion about Geto's apparent revival causes one minute of time to pass within his mind as he flashes back on all of his memories with him. This causes the box's sealing condition to be fulfilled and wraps itself around Gojo. He realizes that this is a checkmate since he is unable to move and his cursed energy is seemingly nullified. Gojo asks who the person in front of him is. The person says that he is Geto. Gojo says that even though his six eyes ability is telling him that the person in front of him is Geto, his soul knows that the person in front of him is not Geto. The imposter in front of him reveals that Gojo is correct and that he is capable of switching bodies by switching brains and therefore is able to covet said body's cursed technique. The person also says that he will unseal Gojo a thousand years after they have finished their plan. Gojo warns the imposter that even though he will be trapped, he should still be worried about Yuta Okotsu. The imposter explains how Yuta had become so powerful and that he won't be able to become the next Gojo. The imposter then bids Gojo farewell as he prepares to seal Gojo within the prison realm. Before being sealed, Gojo asks Geto how long he plans to let someone else take control of his body when Geto's arm suddenly grabs his own neck. The imposter laughs and comments on how this was the first time an inhabited body disobeyed him. The grip is not tight, and the imposter calls Mahito over and the two continue a philosophical discussion on what came first, the body or soul. After listening to the two ramble, Gojo tells the imposter to seal him away already since he's tired of listening to them. The imposter then seals Gojo in the prison gate's boundary. Geto is holding the cube when it begins to take shape and then plummets to the ground by an unforeseen force, shattering the floor on impact. Due to Gojo's massive amount of power, the prison realm is having a hard time processing his power, and Gojo was able to use his technique to force the prison gate's boundary to the ground, much to the annoyance of the imposter. Inside the seal, Gojo comments about how he had messed up, but reassures himself that everything will be fine and that he still has faith in everyone. Itadori's Extermination Arc After the events of the Shibuya incident, Gojo has been deemed an accomplice and is permanently exiled from the Jujutsu Society. Removing a seal is now considered a criminal act, and anyone who does remove the seal will be considered a traitor. Did you enjoy our video? Be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.